Hi, I'm Sangeeta Krishnan and I welcome you on behalf of Jagan Josh to this week's video. So first I'll be taking you through the main headlines of the week, then I'll be coming to the main topic of discussion for today. The main headlines of the week are Government clears rupees 2919 crore Nirbhaya fund for creating safe cities for women. Through this fund, special focus would be laid on women's safety in public places and the establishment of a quick response system to deter crime in these cities. H N Nagmohan Das committee suggests religious minority status for Lingayats. A seven-member expert committee constituted by the Karnataka state government to look into the demands of a separate religious tag for the Lingayats submitted its report on March 2, 2018, recommending religious minority status for the community. India and Pakistan agree to release the elderly women and child prisoners. India and Pakistan on 7th March 2018 agreed to release the elderly women and children and mentally unsound prisoners held in each other's jails on humanitarian grounds. India's endangered Asiatic lion population increases to 600. The endangered Asiatic lion which only lives in the Gir National Forest Park of India has come back from a brink of extinction with its numbers increasing to more than 600. The Supreme Court allows passive euthanasia and living will with strict guidelines. The Supreme Court of India on 9th March 2018 ruled that passive euthanasia and living will are permissible. So this is the topic that I would be discussing in detail with you today. The Supreme Court passed this very significant judgment recognizing the right to die with dignity as a fundamental right. The ruling was delivered by a five judge constitution bench comprising Chief Justice Deepak Mishra and Justices AK Sikri, AM Khan Wilkar, DY Chandrachud and Ashok Bhushan. So first let's understand what is passive euthanasia. Passive euthanasia means withdrawing of medical treatment that is necessary for the continuance of life. It is basically a practice of intentionally ending a patient's life in order to relieve the patient of pain and suffering. Coming to living will a living will is a written document that allows a patient to give precise instructions in advance about the medical treatment that needs to be administered if the person falls terminally ill so in its ruling the supreme court stated that individuals would be allowed to draft a living will specifically stating that they shall not be put on ventilator or life support system if they go into incurable coma in the future So this ruling came on a PIL that was filed by an NGO called Common Cause. The NGO had approached the Supreme Court in 2015 seeking recognition of a living will arguing that when a medical expert concludes that a patient with a terminally ill disease has reached a point of no return then the patient has the right to refuse being put on life support. So uh, in 2011 the Supreme Court had made an exception and allowed passive euthanasia in Aruna Shonberg case. Aruna Shonberg was a nurse who after being sexually assaulted spent 42 years on ventilator till her death in 2015. So while the court has allowed framing of the living will it has issued strict guidelines on who is authorized to give effect to the will. The court has also called for the involvement of a medical board to determine whether the patient in the vegetative state can be revived or not. So with this I conclude my topic for today. Please like and comment if you like our video. You can also visit our website www.jagrnjosh.com for more updates and download our Jagrnjosh current affairs app to stay connected.